ice cream party all the time. Pretty much like a scarecrow. Whoa. Hey everyone. Okay, so today I am doing the April favorites. I don't know why it's the April favorites, but that's what I said. I've got favorites. I've got, uh, I think like one unfavorite, but it's not even a beauty unfavorite. Is that disappointing? I hope not. It was a good month. I'm not gonna lie. I've got some favorites. I'm excited to share with you. First up, I've been using a different foundation. Whoa, not gonna lie, for the past few slash even more months, I've been kind of in a little safety box, safety zone box uh, that I created for myself and just using like the same like BB cream and foundation like all the time. And those two were the BB cream by Flower Beauty and the three in one CoverGirl foundation. And recently I was in like the Sephora in JCPenney's, I don't even know why I was there. And for some reason it struck me. I wanted a new foundation and I picked up the Makeup Forever HD foundation. This foundation was like the rage on YouTube several years ago, maybe more than several. And I definitely still love my CoverGirl 3-in-1, but since I got this, I've been really, really enjoying it. I've been having kind of troubled skin lately because, not gonna lie, I've been eating ice cream like every single day because my life is just like happy right now and all I want to do is eat ice cream. I don't, anyone else do that? I just celebrate every single day, ice cream party, all the time. It's all fun and games until you break out. But, so that kind of leaves me in a weird place where I'm like, I don't want to wear as much makeup because I feel like my skin needs to breathe. But then I'm like, I want to cover up this mess on my face. But, I don't know, lately this foundation has just been making me really happy. I got the color in, I don't know what color I got. I think it might be in 120. Not sure. I will figure out and I will list it down below. But lately, I have definitely been liking this. It's definitely more of like a medium slash light coverage. I do usually use my NYX setting spray underneath it to kind of keep the oiliness at bay. Next up, another thing that I got at Sephora. This was actually just from like a random drive-by online ordering fest. Um, I was showing my friend something that she needed to order on Sephora and then it just... Mm, I, I had to make an order as well. And I have heard nothing about this product anywhere. Maybe I'm out of the loop, I don't know, but it's the Kevin Aquan, uh, the sculpting powder in medium. And it's just basically a contour powder and it's really tiny and I haven't removed the little plastic thing. I don't know why. I just, it was like in this little velvet pouch that was so cute. I'm just like so impressed with the packaging and then like this too. I don't know if this annoys me or if I like it, but most of me likes it because it's like a weird little push button kind of thing. I don't know. Can't explain the way my mind works. But basically it's just this little compact and it's got a really cool toned contour powder. I don't know if you watched my contour video from ages and ages and ages ago. I used to use this L'Oreal True Match powder that was just in a darker tone and right now off the top of my head I cannot remember what shade I was using but it looked so much like this. Since then, they have changed the colors and that color just doesn't exist anymore. I loved that one, it worked for me, it was like super, super cool tone and it kind of mimicked the whole shadow effect but it didn't look muddy and I was super excited when I saw this because it looked like the same color. And I'm sure I could find like another drugstore option but I was just too heartbroken. But I've just been like playing with different things and uh, I don't know, I don't have anything else that's Kevin O'Quinn. Um, I heard about him for a billion years because he's like super famous makeup artist. For some reason, I never bought any of the products until this one and I'm super pleased. I think it's like a pretty great contour powder. It's not too heavy. It's not like, I don't know, sometimes contour has gotten a little bit crazy, I feel. Just had to say that. And this one is just, I mean, I think you could go crazy with this one, but if you just use a light hand, it looks, it looks good. It doesn't look crazy and it's not warm. It's not a bronzer. I'm just super happy with this. It was expensive. I definitely went out on a limb with it, but I'm happy that I did. Next up about them skin issues. Uh, this is something that I got actually for free uh, with points at Sephora. I don't know, how many times can I say Sephora? I did some purchasing at Sephora. It happened. Uh, I got this with some points. It's a Bosha, Bosha Luminizing Black Mask and it's a peel off mask. I think when this first came out, I'm not sure if it was when it first came out, but it was when I first heard about it years ago. I got a sample from Sephora and I was 
pretty in love with it at that time, but I couldn't reason out spending the money for it for whatever. I'm just kind of not a mask person generally. Uh, I, I don't know why. Everyone else uses masks. And I'm like, you're so cool. I should use masks more. And I'm like 99.9% .9 sure I'm going to purchase the full size whenever I'm done with this and I'm almost done with it um, because I love it. I don't know how much it does for my skin actually to be honest, but the peel off process thrills me to no end. A few times I have just used it on my nose, like kind of like a pore strip. And I feel like because it's more flexible than a pore strip, it's less risky. You know what I mean? Whenever you use pore strips, it can like snap your capillaries or do horrifying things I've heard of. I'm not sure if that's really real. I'm, it's probably really real, but it's probably not as horrific as I imagine it to be. I feel like it does the job without being as harsh. You know what I mean? It definitely kind of hurts though. Warning, it feels kind of like it's ripping out your peach fuzz off your face. I am a very peach fuzzy face person. I don't know why, but part of me kind of likes that sensation. So, um, new favorite. Moving on, again, addressing the skin issues. All my favorite blushes, or the blushes my heart truly is drawn to, are super highlighting. Like I love Milani's Luminoso, and I love my Makeup Geek one that's like a peachy, shimmery, gold, awesome one that I can't remember the name of right now. It could be Romance. Don't quote me on that. But when I'm having like spots and redness and raised bumps all over the place especially like on my cheeks like I don't have any that are that high up today I have more like lower uh but earlier this month they were like all high and crazy um shimmery blushes just I can't make them work whenever I have like bumps and stuff on my cheeks so I started using different blushes in my collection to see what could kind of work and I found the solution was my Tarte Amazonian Clay Tartlet blush the shade is called celebrated and it's part of the Tartlet collection I did that whole super fancy awesome campaign with them and they gave me this blush way back when and for whatever reason I just like didn't love it at that time um, I think it was because it doesn't have like a lot of shimmer and stuff and that's like what I'm drawn to. It's, I would say it's like totally matte and it's very, very, very subtle. And for some reason it is like the perfect blush for my skin situation right now and I've totally fallen in love with it. It definitely works. Um, I still like to put a little highlight at the top to kind of like make it pop a little bit more and also to satisfy my need for highlight. Um, but it's definitely been my savior in my time of need. It's a good thing. Next up, I have a fashion favorite. These are the Topshop Moto Tall Jeans in the style Jamie. And a top shop just opened in the Galleria in Houston and I was so excited. I got to go to like a little opening pre-shop event and uh, I was there with Bunny and I actually met one of my old bosses there and it was a fun time. I, you guys know, I love top shop so much and there hasn't been a top shop here this entire time I've been loving it. So it's like all my dreams are coming true basically. And more recently I did some serious damage there and I definitely need to do a haul very, very soon. Um, but my favorite thing that I've gotten there so far are these jeans. Um, you know that I love their denim. They come in tall sizes and I'm a tall girl and they just work for me. But these lately have been my favorite ones. Usually I wear the Lee style, like L-E-I-G-H, just like my name. <laughs> but these are the Jamie ones and I have another pair of Jamie's but for some reason these fit so much better. They're super stretchy. These are kind of like a a kind of like super dark gray with a hint of blue wash and they have these kind of like prefabricated like worn in spots and for some reason I'm into that I'm usually not into that but I'm into that right now and like it's like unfinished at the bottom I don't really know what's gonna happen there I haven't had them very long and they're already looking pretty much like a scarecrow um <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what the future holds for me with these um but I am loving them right now they're so comfy they're super high-waisted which for my other Jamie ones since they're more stiff like it's not as comfortable so I don't wear them as much but these 
I love them. And I actually got them on sale too, so I'm a happy camper. All right, and for my non-beauty favorites, I have two movies and a TV show. Very quickly go through the TV show, Mad Men. It is back, it is making my world, and it's also crushing my world because it's over soon. And if you've been watching my channel since the beginning, you'll know I have always been obsessed with Mad Men. Like, I think I even did like a Mad Men inspired tutorial or outfit of the day or something like that or like it was like a premiere like get ready with me or something like that like I have been obsessed forever I'm so sad it's ending but at the same time I love it so much so I'm just like super excited like every single Sunday and then two movies first it follows did you see that movie I guess it's technically a horror movie but it's not super super scary okay just kidding, it is kind of scary. I saw it twice in the theater. If you watch my vlogs, you'll know that. Um, and so it's definitely not as scary the second time I watched it, but there are some scary moments. Like if you absolutely hate horror movies, you won't like it. You probably won't enjoy it at all. I do like horror movies, but I'm also like kind of a scaredy cat. So like I could deal with it though. It was just, it was just like actually good movie like a quality movie like it looked great the soundtrack was dead on i talked about this all in my vlogs and right now i'm feeling like that might have even been last month i'm not sure but still mentioning it uh second movie second movie is love and mercy i saw that at the dallas international film festival which was like amazing i would definitely like to go to more film festivals that was cool i only got to go for like two days so we didn't get to see as much as i probably would have wanted to but Love and Mercy was definitely a highlight for me. It's about Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys and the Beach Boys specifically Pet Sounds has been a, an obsession of mine since forever and going into it I didn't even know that it was going to be so focused on the time when they were creating Pet Sounds and then it was and then it was so good. I'd say the weakness in that movie is John Cusack. I like him in some things but this I don't think this was the thing for him but even still I like the movie if you're a big fan of the Beach Boys I think you would probably like it too hopefully okay the unfavorite is actually a movie also I hope that isn't a letdown for you but I had to say it uh, the Baba Duke. It's also like a horror movie. I feel like it's been out for a while, but I just recently watched it. And um, there were definitely like creepy moments in it, but generally I just, I feel like the reviews, like there are so many like positive reviews about it. I was hoping for more and like the trailer, I think kind of built it up a bit more for me. And it just, it just didn't, I did not connect with it at all. I just wasn't into it. Total fail. Did you feel a different way? Did you even see it? I didn't hear about anybody seeing it that's like actually in my life. I just heard about it on the internet, which is that not most things for me? I don't know. Anyway, moving on. I had an awesome April. I think my magical moment was probably when I got to go to the Dallas International Film Festival with my friend Georgetta. I got to explore Dallas. I got to get away for the weekend. And I would definitely like to do more stuff like that in the future. Uh, what was your magical moment? I would love to hear that. I think when we collectively reflect on the positive moments through our month, it'll help us like have a more positive outlook. Maybe, hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully you agree, comment down below. Also tell me, what were your favorite things this month? I wanna try new things all the time. So tell me down below. Also, you can hit me up anywhere on the internet. It's Leanne Says absolutely everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, Snapchat. You can add me on Snapchat if you'd like to. All the links will be down below. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if you have subscribed, thank you so much. You are my people and I love you. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone. Mad Men is everything. Hey everyone. <clears throat> my nails are on fire today. No bueno. Another thing I really like about this palette is that there are six matte shades and they're all pretty good. Uh, they are a little bit on the powdery side, but they're pretty well pigmented and I definitely think that the matte colors are the strong colors in this palette compared to the shimmer.